This is chapter eight, seepage. So we're going to start this new chapter today. And if you look at the list of course objectives, this is one of the last two bullet points on this course objective list. We're going to learn how to estimate seepage quantity in this chapter. And the only thing left beyond this chapter eight is stress distribution due to surface loads. So we will cover that in uh, next week's lecture. And for this seepage, basically seepage refers to water flows through soil. And this is important for many geotechnical and engineering applications. So I want to show a couple of examples here. So this picture, this is Arovio Dam in California. This is the tallest dam in the United States sitting at 770 feet. To design this hydraulic structure, you need first the knowledge of hydraulic conductivity or permeability of soil. So something we discussed in chapter seven. And then also you need to understand how water flows beneath this hydraulic structure or around this hydraulic structure. And also the uh, quantity of water flow. What we're going to learn in this chapter will help us answer these questions. In the second example, uh, this is Titan Dam. This is perhaps one of the most famous geotechnical engineering failure problems. And Titan Dam was completed in the 1970s. And the dam actually failed after it was filled for water for the very, very first time. And this failure is caused by a phenomenon called piping. So piping basically is seeping water progressively erodes or washes away soil particles and leaving large voids we call pipes in the soil. If this piping is not stopped, the voids will continue to grow and will eventually lead to failure, such as this teaching dam here. And for chapter eight, there are a few things we're going to go over. The first one, for a seepage problem, you need to understand how energy or total head distributes as water flows through soil. And then Laplace equation of continuity, this is a very important mathematical equation that governs water flow. And the core of this chapter is this flow nets here. Something we will discuss in the next week's lecture, but flow nets basically are practical engineering tools to solve seepage problem. So we're going to go talk about flow net basics and also how to use flow nets to solve seepage problems. So that's a plan for this chapter. And for today, we're going to go over the first couple of bullet points. And to illustrate this seepage uh, problem, I'm going to use this seepage underneath a hydraulic structure. So you have a concrete dam that sits on permeable soil. On the left-hand side, you have a higher water table. So I call this upstream. And on the right-hand side, this is downstream. And water is going to flow through this permeable soil from upstream to downstream. And we have impermeable layer at the bottom. So for this seepage problem, there are a few key questions we want to answer. So first is how much water seeps beneath this hydraulic structure? And that's the flow quantity we call small Q and capital Q. So I will define these flow quantities. And then how large is the uplift pressure on your hydraulic structure? So as water seeps through soil, it's going to impose uplift pressure on your structure. So we need to consider the, uh, the magnitude of this applied pressure in the design. So make sure uh, it doesn't cause any problem to the stability of your structure. And third one is what's a factor of safety against erosion piping at the downstream, uh, downstream edge. So as water exits at the downstream, so it's still going to cause problem there. So we're going to estimate the factor of safety against this erosion or piping. So we can find answers to these questions by knowing the following. So the first is the water head or head loss, the geometry of the problem, the hydraulic conductivity of the soil. So that's basically small k. Darcy's law, something we discussed in chapter seven. And finally, this Laplace equation. So in this chapter, I'm going to focus on these two things here. So why is the water head and head loss as water seeps through soil? And second, what's this Laplace equation and how do we use it? So I'll start with the first bullet points, water head and head loss in soil. 
basically to uh, illustrate this water head and head loss concept, again, I'm going to, going to use this uh, concrete dam example. So on this slide, you see this same concrete dam and I'm putting piezometers at different locations. And we're going to, to actually calculate the head in water at different locations. So I'm going to use point A here to illustrate this calculation here. So for point A, first the pressure head at point A. So pressure head is the, uh, basically if you put a piezometer at point A, the height of the water column in the piezometer is the pressure head. So let's call this H, it's a P for pressure. So this pressure head at A is the height of water column inside the piezometer. So that's H P at A. 26 feet. And then the elevation head, we call Z. And elevation head is basically measured with respect to a reference datum. In this example here, I'm going to use downstream water table as a reference datum. And you can pick any point as reference datum. I'm going to just use the downstream water table. And point A is at seven feet below the reference datum. So it's negative seven. Let's use uh, feet here. So it's seven feet below the reference datum, so it's negative seven. And then the total head at A, okay, so we call HA. From Bernoulli's equation, this total head consists of the pressure head and elevation head. And for this point A, the total head at point A is pressure head with, which is 26. And elevation head Z sub A is negative seven. So that's the total head at point A, and that is 19 feet. So that's the total head at point A. Since you have these piezometer readings at points B, C, D, and E, you can repeat this process to find pressure head, elevation head, and total head at these locations. And that's basically what's summarized in this table here. So this table summarizes the pressure head, elevation head, and total head at these uh, five points here. For the last column, I'm going to calculate the head difference. And I define it as head loss from point A. So for point A, that's when water enters soil. The head loss, that difference is zero. And then the head loss at point B is 19 minus 15. So when water flows to point B, the uh, total head is 15. So the head loss is four. And then at point C is nine. And then the uh, head loss at D, 19 minus five, 14. And last one, point E, this is when water exits soil. Then at that point, total head is zero. So the head loss is 19. So if you look at this table here, point A, this is upstream and point D downstream. And you notice that the total head is 19 at point A and it's zero at downstream. And the head loss increases as water flows through soil. So you see the head loss increases. And this loss of head is due to basically the friction between water and soil particles. So the total head basically, if you recall what we discussed in chapter seven, it represents the energy in water. And when there is a difference in energy, if you recall that table, let's look at the table here. So this is basically the energy in the soil, uh, in the water. And when there's a difference in energy, water is going to flow. So that flow of water is driven by this difference in total head. And water flows from high energy to low energy. So that's what driven the flow of water through soil. There's a difference in total energy. Therefore, the key actually in solving seepage problem is to know the total head at a given location. So if you know the total head, 
at a given location. First, you can calculate the head loss in seepage. That's what we did in that previous table. So if we know the total head at different points, then we can calculate the head loss in seepage. And then we can use Darcy's law to compute the uh, flow quantity. And the way to do this is if you recall Darcy's law, let's call that Q. Darcy's law Q, the flow quant rate of flow Q is K times I times A. And K is hydraulic conductivity or simply permeability. And this I is delta H over D delta L. And then A is cross-sectional area. To estimate the flow quantity using Darcy's law, you need a permeability. And for a given problem, you know the cross-sectional area of the soil. And L is the distance water travels along the flow path. And really, the only thing unknown here is this delta H. So that's the head loss. So if you can find the head loss between two points, then you can simply use Darcy's law to calculate the flow quantity. And if you know the total head at a given location, you can also calculate the pressure head. So that's from, remember that Bernoulli's equation. If you know the total head H, then the pressure head is total head minus the elevation head. And if you know the uh, pressure head, then can, you can calculate the pore pressure. And pore pressure is simply just HP times gamma water. So really the key in seepage problem is to predict this total head at a given location. So basically predicts how this energy in water changes as water flows through soil. And for that purpose, there's a very important equation. It's called Laplace equation. So this Laplace equation governs the head or energy loss when water seeps through soil. It can be used to solve, let's say, the total head at any given location. So that's a governing equation behind seepage problem. In this Laplace equation, again, can be used to find this total head at a given location we call H. So next, I want to briefly talk about this Laplace equation and then I'll save the flow nets for next lecture. First, as I mentioned, this Laplace equation describes how head or energy changes as water flows through soil. And it's not only limited to soil mechanics problems. So Laplace equation can be applied to many problems where you have a differential energy across a resistive medium. And I listed a couple other examples where Laplace equation also applies. One is voltage difference in electric current. Two is temperature difference in heat flow. For both of these problems, you can use Laplace equation. And then the derivation of this Laplace equation uses continuity of flow, basically Q in equals to Q out, and also uses Darcy's law. It's not actually difficult to derive Laplace equation, just use these two basic principles here you can derive Laplace equation. And for isotropic or for anisotropic media, so this is basically what Laplace equation looks like. And Kz and Kx here, so these are the permeability or hydraulic conductivity in the x and the z direction. So that's for anisotropic media. And if it's an isotropic media, where permeability in x and z direction is the same, horizontal and vertical direction is the same. This is the Laplace equation for isotropic media. In Laplace equation, as I mentioned, it governs the head loss as water seeps through soil. So the solution of Laplace equation is the spatial distribution of total head H. It's a function of location. So that's what you get from solving Laplace equation. You get this total head H at any location, or let's use Z here. X for horizontal, Z for vertical direction. Okay. So it governs basically the total head at any, it gives you the total head at any location. So since we know Laplace equation is a governing equation, and to solve Laplace equation, 
there are actually three groups of methods. The first one is analytical. So you can solve the Laplace equation in closed form if the problem is very simple. So if you have very simple geometry, 1D condition, you can solve Laplace equation in closed form. And the second group of methods is numerical methods. So you can use numerical methods such as, such as finite element method to solve Laplace equation. And the third one here, so this is what we're going to discuss in this chapter. It's a graphical approximation. And this tool is called FlowNets. So FlowNets is basically a practical engineering tool that can be used to solve Laplace equation. And this is what we're going to discuss in more detail in this chapter. So basically what's left in this chapter is this flow net. And I want to save this flow net for the next lecture. We're going to talk about flow net basics and also how to use flow net to solve CPG problems.